Hello again, my name is Marty Braden, and I want to welcome you to my channel, especially if you're new to my channel. I hope you find it not only to be interesting and informative, but I hope you find it enjoyable too. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and click the notification bell, as it makes YouTube's um, algorithm push my content out to an ever larger audience. So thanks. Having just recently turned 70, oh my, and just returning from a funeral for one of my wife's three living brothers who died unexpectedly from a stroke at 78, I found myself reflecting not only on how fragile life is, but how special and important life is, especially when you consider the more important decisions we are presented with during our sojourn here on this planet. With these thoughts in mind, I feel a great responsibility to express my heartfelt feelings for those of you who are watching this video, as well as many of my other videos I've posted in an effort to help dispel the accuser of the brethren's fog of lies and deception. At this very moment, Satan has shifted to his highest gear in this race to destroy God's children's faith in God and in his son, Jesus Christ, and especially in his plan of happiness, as it's taught in the restored church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints by its living prophets and apostles. The living prophet and president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints today said five years ago in April 2019 General Conference, time is running out. Let me echo President Nelson's warning voice by speaking directly to those of you who have either left the church or are experiencing to whatever degree your own personal cognitive dissonance and therefore are feeling despair and fear as you try to navigate the many opposing voices that swirl all around us with what I've been calling the accusatory fog. May I lovingly ask you to listen up. Please listen up to what I'm going to share with you today. First of all, I want you to know that I love you as your spirit brother and that I'm praying for you daily. Secondly, I want you to know that I don't judge you for your choices or because you have doubts about the church, nor do I judge you for having beliefs that are different than my own. Making those choices is what we're all sent here to this earth to do. And so I happily and willingly extend grace to you always and pray that you'll do the same towards me. I want you, however, to watch this video uh, to its very end. Stay with it, please. And then I want you to check in with your heart, in, with your inner self, your inner person, spirit person that's housed in your body, and ask him or her this question. Do I see any of what Brother Braden just said happening in America today? And is your, if your answer is yes, I want you to ask yourself, why do I think and believe it is? Is it just people being people, or is it the result of following man's word and rejecting or rebelling against God's word? In other words, as you play the role of a fruit inspector here, do you find that the fruit that you're inspecting is good fruit or it's bad fruit? And if it's bad fruit, how is it affecting the rest of the bushel of the fruit? That said, I want you to make note that what I'm going to share with you now is a call of warning. And because it is, I want you to honestly reflect in your mind what I will say and then determine for yourself when you think this warning was given to the church and world at large. I said honestly because we all tend to lie or justify a little bit ourselves about how we're living and what uh, we prioritize and what we're doing and are doing and have done as we've tried to decide what's really going on in this world around us and what it really means to us. I'm, of course, speaking of... Um, we're seeing on the news and on the social media outlets like cable news channels, etc., Instagram, TikTok, and various YouTube videos, if you get your news from watching these sorts of things. No longer are the legacy sources the primary sources for such news. Most of the cable channels put forth fake information in an effort to try and shape what's going on throughout the world, telling their viewers how they should interpret what they're watching and not letting you think for yourself. It's especially egregious here in America, I think. With this setting of the table, let me jump in right to it. I titled this video, "We, excuse me, He Who Has Eyes to See, Open Your Eyes. He Who Has Eyes to See, Open Your Eyes. And that's because none of us have to be a prophet to recognize what's taking place of late. In our effort to try and get caught up on all the world's events taking place throughout the world, and especially what's happening here in America, which country many call the greatest, most blessed nation ever established, we constantly hear opposing voices and messages, leaving us the choice which one we want to believe and which path we want to take. 
As this particular video series title declares, I'm trying my best to provide the kind of content that will help all of us in our goal of dispelling the accusatory fog from our own lives, as well as help strengthen our family members' faith and encourage and invite both members and non-members alike to connect more fully with the true and living God and investigate His true and living church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That way all of us can see clearly and discern the truth for ourselves. Now my approach as best as I can uh, make it or take it is to follow what St. Francis, who was the Bishop of Geneva in 1602, put into action as, he proposed, as it was proposed by the decrees of the Council of Trent. It says, the person who possesses Christ-like meekness is affectionate and tender towards everyone. He is disposed to forgive and excuse the frailties of others. The goodness of his heart appears in a sweet affability that influences his words and actions, presents every object to his view in the most charitable and pleasing light. End quote. That's what I've tried to do. It's my belief that only love and kindness will draw people to the gospel of Jesus Christ and will draw those who left the church of faith and their faith in his gospel. It's the only way to bring them back to the faith is through love and kindness and not disrespect and contention. And so we struggle, all of us, to struggle to discern the truth from within all of the lies and deceptions of the world that fills the air with the loud and boisterous chorus of voices. I testify that there is a constant clarion warning voice within this midst of darkness that surrounds us. And I'm now going to share with you one such voice of warning. I'm not going to reveal whose uh, voice it is right now, but I will later. Here's what this prophet declared, and I quote, I would like to talk with you today about the United States and its relationship to God. Most people do not realize it, but this nation is different from all other nations. It has a divine destiny not shared by other countries and was set up as an independent power by a deliberate act of God to fulfill that destiny. Because our nation is a creation of heaven, and because it has a divine destiny, we Americans must learn that it can continue, excuse me, it can continue to exist only as it aligns itself with the powers of heaven. If we turn our backs upon the Almighty, even by ignoring Him, we jeopardize our national future. If we deliberately oppose His purposes, we place ourselves in danger of destruction. These stern facts have been taught to Americans from the beginning of our national history. Starting with our first president, George Washington, he realized that he publicly announced that we have obtained our independence through an act of providence since we were far too weak to gain it by ourselves. Knowing this, knowing this, he warned that if we are to survive as a free and independent nation, we must obey the Almighty God who brought us into being. Abraham Lincoln, another inspired president, said virtually the same thing, warning that if we fail to obey the commandments of God, we shall go down to ruin. We have reached a point in our national history as crucial as the time of the Civil War. Our present dangers are quite as great. Threats to our future seem even greater, and yet, as a people, we have failed to turn to the divine power that created us. It is true that public surveys of the past indicate an increase in church membership and attendance, but that is no measure of the depth of conversion necessary to bring the principles of Christ into our daily lives. Because of our love of wealth and prestige and our insatiable passion for ease and pleasure, we fail to take the essential spiritual steps which could and would preserve us. Everyone, every man on the street, knows that we cannot continue with present conditions as they are, and yet we seem not to have the desire or the courage to alter our course. Whether we are willing to admit it or not, our one great need is to turn to God. Our human efforts have failed and seem almost to lead us into ever more difficult entanglements. We need more than human wisdom. We need divine help. We need to be saved from our war and criminal elements, from anarchy and from riots. We need a shield against the devious schemes of enemies abroad. I recently did a video on secret combinations. Check that out. Continuing, we need to be saved from corrosion within, 
from the ravage of immorality, dishonesty, drunkenness, broken homes, delinquent parents, and undisciplined children. We need protection from atheism, for it is destroying our way of life. Do you doubt that atheism, atheism is a threat to America? Atheism is the cause of most of our ills. Now let me interrupt here and interject that the atheism he speaks of is that which comes from the minds of those who hate religion of any kind and feel it is absolutely evil. That's the specific atheism I'm talking about here. Continuing on. If we were realistic about our present plight, we would admit that atheism in its mo many forms is our greatest enemy, whether it be in abandoning God for pleasure or money, or in yielding to philosophical meanderings, or in surrendering to those forces that break down family life, destroy free government, seduce the masses, and spawns hate and war. Are we not intelligent enough to perceive that shocking fact? Are we not sufficiently alert to see our desperate need for an infinite power who can rescue us in this present hour? Are we forever to be obtuse that we confine God to a remote past and an uncertain hereafter? Can we never learn that he is a God of the present day, of the here and now? In the midst of the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln said something that should frighten present-day Americans. He was very realistic when our country was being split asunder by the war between the states. That was 1861 through 1865. He knew very well that the preservation of the nation could be achieved in only one way. It was not through our frowning battlements, nor our bristling seacoast, as he expressed it. Lincoln said that if we, as a people, do not turn to God and serve Him, our nation will drift into destruction. He expressed this, his meaning in these words. If we do not do right, God will let us go our own way to ruin. If we do right, He will lead us safely out of this wilderness and crown our arms with victory. Thereupon he summoned America to turn to God as the only means of survival. J. Edgar Hoover, a past FBI head, stated it in this way, What we need in America is a return to the God of our fathers and a most vigorous defense against the minions of godlessness and atheism. Why do we need... Uh, what, excuse me, why do we not heed these warnings? Similar counsel has been given by nearly every president of the United States in his time and by economists, educators, jurists, and statesmen. Let us consider a few of their warnings. As we have indicated, George Washington said that this nation cannot endure apart from the God of heaven. Woodrow Wilson said the sum of the whole matter is this. Our civilization cannot survive materially unless it be redeemed spiritually. It can be saved only by becoming permeated with the Spirit of Christ. Calvin Coolidge said, The strength of our country is the strength of its religious convictions. Franklin D. Roosevelt said, No greater thing could come to our land than a revival of the spirit of religion to stir the hearts of men and women of all faiths to a reassertion of their belief in God and their dedication to His will. I doubt, said Roosevelt, if there is any problem, social, political, or economic, that would not melt away before the fire of such a spiritual reawakening. President Eisenhower continued, excuse me, constantly reminded us of our spiritual obligation. Roger W. Babson, great economist of his day, said, In the last analysis, our national future depends upon whether it is spiritually or materially minded. Only the golden rule will save this country not the rule of gold. James Roland Angel, Angel, former president of Yale University, said, It is my considered conviction that there can be no enduring alleviation of the social and political ills which plague us unless and until there is an essential change in the ethical and spiritual attitude of the rank and file of men. But as mentioned in an editorial in the United States News and World Report, with so many champions of the doctrine, why are there so few ready to practice the preachment? Large numbers of people faithfully follow their creeds, and yet, in the grim business of everyday life, do we perceive a fundamental change? Do we see men on every side ready to surrender their enormous power or their possessions or even their pride to the service of God? A spiritual revival would awaken America and purify her whole national life. It is not, however, to be attained by mere expression of purpose. The editorial continues. It requires action throughout our waking hours. 
Not until each and every one of us feels the impact of spiritual achievement. Not until the eagerness to serve God is stronger than the eagerness to serve ourselves. Not until we are ready to make sacrifices of time and money and power and pride for the sake of others who need our help and our guidance, we will begin to understand the excuse me, elemental transformation, which is prerequisite to the spiritual rebirth of the nation. The end of quotations, the prophetic the prophet continues, Our situation in America is mo not merely a case of fighting the encroachments of seditious influences. It is not only a matter of legislating against crime. Neither is it one of the changing our Constitution because some misguided individuals think it is obsolete, nor is it a case of sending more men to the Orient to fight an enemy who has trapped us into a different kind of war. We are confronted with the choice of whether or not we as a nation will return to God in spirit and in truth as a means of actual survival. We must choose whether we will become fully converted to Him or not. To put it plainly, it is largely a case of obedience versus lip service. The Almighty is a God of war as well as of peace. The Bible clearly teaches that. And He has a power to be dealt with in this present crisis. He can be our literal Savior here and now. He can protect and preserve our nation. He has done it in the past and He can do it again. He can end the war. I'm leaving what war out of this for now. And give everyone involved an honorable peace. He can save us from criminality and from all the other inhumanities which now impel us on a cross of suicidal selfishness. It is no imaginary ruin which faces our nation if we reject Jesus Christ, as Lincoln pointed out so dramatically. And it is possible that our greatest greatness can be buried in profound obscurity if we refuse to turn to God as Daniel Webster expressed it. Already there is a talk of a new civil war and of riots that will totally eclipse those of last summer. Insurrection is now on the lips of thousands of agitators. Excuse me, agitators. The basic concept of our free government are being challenged. Overnight, this nation could be paralyzed through the devious efforts of some of our treacherous citizens. And if widespread insurrection comes, do you suppose for one moment that our enemies from without will sit by idly? All our efforts to save ourselves thus far have failed. But God can solve our problems, and He will do so if we turn to Him in humility and faith. However, let us not suppose that a fee, few feeble prayers will be sufficient to call down His aid. It will take more than half-hearted supplications to save us. Prayer is powerful indeed when accompanied by works of righteousness, but prayers alone is but lip service. The Almighty spurns his, uh, lip service. Empty words are not symptoms of, excuse me, empty words are but symptoms of hypocrisy to Him. He is a God of action, a God of works as well as of faith. He demands obedience to Him if we are to retrieve Him, receive Him, and, and receive His help from Him. Are we uh, ready to thus far obey Him? We cannot deal in halfway measures, not with God, and neither can we serve two masters, I ask you. Is every one of us willing to do unto others as we would be done by? Are we willing to be merciful, kind, and pure in heart? To turn the, the other cheek, to go the extra mile? Is every one of us willing to sufficiently Christ-like, uh, to be sufficiently Christ-like to accept his present um, precept that says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Our great need for repentance is clearly evident. The solution to our problem is not in violence or um, in new legislation, neither is it in training our police in the latest anti-riot methods. Our answer can be found only in obedience to Christ on the part of everybody. Jesus said that an evil tree cannot bring forth good fruit. A crime-ridden society cannot bring forth a new generation of un, uh, upright citizens, nor can a nation of drinkers produce sober offspring. Can people who condone immorality uh, provide a chaste and successful beginning for babies born illicitly in a new generation? Can we escape the diseases so inseparably connected with immorality? Can people who knowingly undermine good character expect to reap anything but the whirlwind? For every practical reason, we must change our course 
and turn away from the selfishness and corruption now growing among us like a gigantic malignancy. For every practical reason, we must turn to Christ and live his teachings, said Lincoln in his first inaugural address, intelligence, patriotism, Christianity, and a reliance on him who has never ever yet forsaken this favored lamb are still com competent to adjust in the best way all our difficulties. In ancient times, an inspired prophet who lived in this western hemisphere said that God doth not command us that we shall subject ourselves to our enemies, but that we should put our trust in him, and he will deliver us. Another ancient prophet spoke directly to modern America for telling the, uh, the assistance God will give us if, if we serve him. Said he, this is a choice land. And whatsoever nations shall possess it shall be free from bondage and from captivity and from all other nations under heaven if they will but serve the God of the land who is Jesus Christ. And that prophet also said, even as did Lincoln, that if we in America fail to serve Jesus Christ, we will face certain destruction. This is a divine warning first from the prophet of old and then from the inspired president of the Civil War days, Abraham Lincoln. O oh, America, turn to God. This is my prayer. But do not give him mere lip service. Obey him with all your heart, might, mind, and strength. Let us save ourselves from the present day crisis in the only certain way there is, remembering that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And for this I earnestly pray in the sacred name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the end of the quote of this prophet. Okay. When do you think this warning voice declared this clarion call to do a checkup from the neck up? It was given by Elder Mark E. Peterson from the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles in General Conference back in 1968. That's 56 years ago. It's more than a half a century. Elder B. St. Peterson, being one of 15 prophets, seers, and revelators on the earth at that time, spoke often about America and its destiny. I was just 14 at the time. As you can see, it wasn't always in praising terms for its glorious history. This talk, and many others like it, was a warning to all of us living here in America to stop forgetting our God, Jesus Christ. You might be wondering, what does that have to do with dispelling the accusatory fog, Marty? And how does this help strengthen my testimony of the restored gospel? Well, as I said at the start of this video, I ask you to honestly reflect in your mind and determine with, uh, when you think this warning was given to the church and the world at large. Did you think it was 50 plus years ago? Or did you think it was in the last 10 years? And now I'm asking you to consider how far we've come down the road Elder Peterson discussed 56 years ago, what he just described. That's more than a half a century ago. What has happened in that 50 short years? Are we following and living the words of Christ more fully as a nation and as individuals today? Or have we gone further down the road to destruction? I ask that you consider this list of the newly new, excuse me, the many news headlines that describes what's happening in America today, as well as a list of the, what's happening throughout the world, and see how well it aligns with the warnings and the warning voice of Elder Peterson. I'm not going to do it for you, but I will do a simple sh uh, sharing of my perspective by simply listing a few issues I find facing us today. At the time of 1968, there was the Vietnam War that I spoke about, but today there's the Ukraine versus the Russian War. This conflict has had a significant impact and resulted in many, many thousands of casualties. There's the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, Israel versus Hamas. This conflict has had a severe impact on civilians and involves regional players. The war in Yemen, U.S. and U.K.'s involvement against Houthi rebels. This conflict is primarily a civil war within Yemen, but has significant international involvement, including the U.S., U.K., and Saudi-led coalition. Do, you, um, excuse me, do our youth know that the founding of America was an act of providence? Are we as a nation obeying God's commandments or are we fast approaching the path of going down to ruin? Are we free from having civil war in our land? And if so, is it many years from now or sooner than later? Or, or no, it's not going to happen. In Christianity's membership and activity rate, is Christianity's membership and activity rate growing or diminishing today? Consider the news headlines about different 
denominations splitting and splitting and splitting. How are we doing on the front lines regarding immorality, dishonesty, drunkenness, broken homes, delinquent parents, and undisciplined children? Has that gone down since 56 years ago, or has it just exploded? What does that say? Are these ailments diminishing, or are they increasingly breaking past records? How widespread is atheism today versus how it was back 56 years ago in, say, 1968? Has it gone like this, and is it just going amongst the, the, the Gen Z and millennials? And, you know, what, what, what's the bar say? Do a quick Google check on that. It'll blow your mind. How are we doing with the trend of abandoning God for pleasure and money? or in yielding to philosophical meanderings, or in surrendering to those forces which break down the family life, destroying free government, seducing the masses, and spawning hate and war everywhere. Has that diminished, or has it exploded in the last 56 years? He who has eyes to see, wake up! It was said that the preservation of the nation could be achieved in only one way. Has America chosen that way? Calvin Cooley said, again, I repeat, the strength of our country is the strength of its religious convictions. How's our convictions doing today? Are the basic concept of our free government being challenged more vigorously today than ever before, or is it pretty much the same and it's just kind of gone on as a plateau? If you're honest with yourself, I don't care what's your faith or belief or lack of belief, if you're honest with yourself and reflect on the last 56 years, it has exploded in the wrong direction. It was said that overnight this nation could be paralyzed through the devious efforts of some of our treacherous citizens. Do you see such treacherous efforts being made today? And if so, are they more devious than ever before? Is it common knowledge and common on news and, and our government liars upon liars and lies? They're lying to us. They're using the media to deceive us. Is there any of that going on? The title of this talk by Elder Peterson is America and God, and it, is, uh, it was given during the April General Conference, like I said, back in 1968. And like I said, 56 years ago, a lot has happened. Here's a list of the wars going on at that same time. The Vietnam War was going, the Soviet-Afghan War, the Iraq-Iraq War, Iran-Iraq War, the Falcons War, the Lebanon War, the India-Pakistan War, Arab-Israeli War, the Soviet invasion of Czechoslovakia, and that took place around 1968. Besides the Ukrainian war, there are multiple armed conflicts happening right now, today, throughout the world. The Middle East and North Africa conflict, more than 45 armed conflicts. <clears throat> Africa, more than 35 armed conflicts. Asia, there are 21 armed conflicts. Europe, seven armed con conflicts. Latin, six armed conflicts. Wars and rumors of wars. Fulfillment of prophecy. You cannot deny that. This doesn't cover all of the domestic strife that's going on within the societies of the world, including all across the United States. Each issue could be a video in and of themselves. All of these conflicts show that mankind just cannot seem to get it together to become one. They can't agree. And power seeking and, and authority is ruling so much that every tool of deception and power is being brought to bear by the enemies of faith and truth. I have placed links in this talk as well as a link to the article about all of the conflicts taking place throughout the world today for your review. It is my hope that you will reflect on them and ask yourselves this. Does all of this affirm that Elder Marky e. Peterson was a prophet 56 years ago? If I am honest with myself, I believe it does. In closing, let me say once again, O oh America, America, turn to God. That is my prayer. And that's because as the brethren of the past and those living and walking the earth today have warned, the preservation of our nation is going to be achieved in one way and one way only, through obedience versus lip service. If we here in America fail to serve Jesus Christ and we reject him and his message of safety and hope, we will face certain destruction, or as one president of America said, ruin. Until next time, I wish you all continued success. God bless. Bye.